In today's age of Google and instant information acquisition, it's hard to remember what it was like to actually have to wait to get the answers we're looking for. Like decades ago, when investigators couldn't quickly match a fingerprint or DNA found at a crime scene to millions of entries in a database like they can today with the National Fingerprint and DNA databases. Or before Mari could use a database to match DNA for paternity tests on his daytime TV show. <laughs> well, in the world of counterfeit documents, currency, and inks, we have existed in that reality, not having a national database for matches. Tonight, I'm going to talk to you about a growing problem of counterfeiting that has spawned a quarter billion dollar industry in the US alone and is a huge security threat internationally and what we are doing in the forensic science community to combat these issues. Headlines like these are becoming more and more common, and for as long as I remember, have influenced me to be where I am today. Like most children, I had aspirations as to what I wanted to be when I grew up. Unlike most children, however, I didn't want to be a firefighter, a teacher, or even an athlete. I wanted to be a forensic scientist, and here's my sixth grade bio to prove it. When my parents gave me my first CSI science kit, I doubt they realized that's exactly what I would be doing almost two decades later. Now, I'm sure most people, when you hear the words forensic science, your mind immediately goes to one of the many popular crime TV shows. CSI Miami, anyone? Now, while I don't drive around in a Hummer wearing stylish designer sunglasses, I'm going to show you that forensic chemistry is just as exciting. Now, when I started my PhD three years ago, my advisor was awarded a quarter million dollar grant to develop a protocol for the analysis of inks to produce chemical fingerprints. The goal was to develop a database that could be used in crime labs throughout the country. Now, what does that actually mean? We had to develop a way to obtain chemical fingerprints from inks and create a database that could be used in forensic labs. Now, as a chemist, I was excited to see how the science would develop. And as a forensic scientist, I was excited to be applying that same science to upholding justice and law in society, what I've always seen forensic science as being crucial to. Now, why inks? Well, why would the, friend, the federal government be interested in inks? Besides all of their common uses, inks are used in the production of security documents, like passports and visas and most significantly, money. Being able to check the authenticity of security documents at borders is a huge issue for the Homeland Security Administration. While the production of counterfeit currency threatens our national economy, and is of huge interest to the US Secret Service. What makes it even more difficult for the federal government is that you, and therefore criminals as well, have access to tons of printers in your home, at school, in the office, and they can be used in the production of counterfeit documents and currency. Because of this widely accessible printing technology, counterfeiters are su producing sophisticated fraudulent documents and currency using readily available inks, and thus the rate and quality of counterfeiting is increasing. Now, we had to develop a way to obtain the chemical fingerprints from inks. And this is possible because inks are composed of a number of chemicals that together form chemical signatures or fingerprints that can be used to trace the ink and in the ideal situation back to the source printer. With chemical analysis, we can tell the difference between two inks from different manufacturers like HP and Canon and even two inks from the same brand. Now, these are two counterfeit bills that look identical, right? But were, did they come from the same source? Were they printed using the same printer? With the chemical fingerprints pictured here, we are able to distinguish inks, those two inks, from different sources. And the tools and instruments that we forensic chemists use in the lab can help us do just that. Here I am in the lab preparing a bill to be analyzed in real time. The tool I used in the video is called Direct Analysis in Real-Time Mass Spectrometry, 
or in case you can't remember all that, Dart for short. Now, Dart is useful because it reveals information on the liquid vehicle component of inks. This is basically the liquid that helps move the ink from the printer cartridge to the paper. Dart had previously been applied to the analysis of explosives, drugs, and other items and evidence of interest, but this is the first time that it had been applied to inks on such a large scale. The information that you see here that we got in just seconds is part of that chemical fingerprint that can be used to be entered into the database for comparison and hopefully a match. Now, Dart is great because as you saw, it's quick. It allows us to analyze inks directly on paper without destroying the sample or evidence. And most significantly, it allows us to compare inks based on that chemical information obtained that can be used in tracing those inks back to the source. And the best part is that forensic chemists can use this same tool in their labs to enter information into the database. Working with my team who used other tools, we analyzed hundreds of inks from over 30 brands and currency from 25 different manufacturers to populate the database with thousands of entries. But this is just the start. The beauty of the database is that Forensic labs across the country and even the world can add entries to the database, which will only improve its effectiveness as more people access it. Now, while the entire process doesn't occur in seconds, like CSI would have you to believe, compared to previously existing methods of individually comparing ink by ink, our methods and database allows for a significantly shorter analysis period. After presenting my work to multiple government agencies and actually training them on our methodology, I've come to realize that the demand for this database is huge. Just like every crime lab in the country uses the National Fingerprint Database, APHIS, and the National DNA Database, CODIS, our database has the same potential for ink analysis. For example, most local labs have to, most local police labs have to pass along the analysis of inks to larger federal laboratories, partially due to the lack of a national database. But with our database and protocols, this could soon change. A national database could lead to multiple forensic labs in different geographical locations to work together to increase intelligence for investigative leads. As more scientists contribute to the database, it will only make it better and make it easier to trace those counterfeit inks back to the source. What's even most significant is that the, this knowledge has the potential to aid investigators in protecting our borders and shutting down that quarter billion dollar counterfeiting industry. Now, we scientists joke a lot about the many crime TV shows, but in reality, the goals are the same. And there are some days when forensic science is just that cool. And the little kid in me is really excited to be doing what I always dreamt of doing. Thank you.